Look, let's be honest, we're all guilty of it at one point or another. When a team has a down season, and maybe it's due to a number of factors as opposed to a major injury that we can pinpoint and say, oh, he had an ACL injury, he was out the entire season, that's why their team was bad, this happened, that happens. Maybe it's just three or four things that happened and all led to a down season. When that happens, it's not really treated in the same regard when it should be. When you're looking at the Celtics and you look at the injuries they had, you look at what happened to Jason Tatum, even him losing form at a period of time because of the virus and all of these factors, that's why they had a down season. It wasn't because they're a terrible team. It's not because they're not going to be back in the top of the Eastern Conference again like they were for four straight years before this year. And I'm not going to use the past as a huge indicator because obviously the Nets are a super team level now. You've got other teams that are really good. There's a lot of teams that got better. So we can't just use the past as an indicator for what's going to happen this year. But this is still the makings of a team that made the Eastern Conference Finals just last year against the Miami Heat and were back and forth with the Heat. Six games, but it could have been seven and it could have been the Boston Celtics series. It really could have. This is still the makings of that team. They've still got the same superstar player in Jason Tatum. They've still got the same star player. Actually, not the same star player because he's got a lot better than Jalen Brown. They've still got the heart and soul, Marcus Smart, and they've got a new coach and a lot of new depth, which I want to talk about because free agency wise, we'll talk about Jason Tatum maybe taking the next leap, Jalen Brown, Marcus Smart, all of those guys, Peyton Pritchard, Mr. Summer League himself, although he did struggle in the final, but Mr. Summer League himself prior to that, Portland Pro-Am God himself, if you know, you know, he dropped to 90 points. I'll let, I'll let you know. That's what happened. But we'll talk about all of those things in a bit. But I want to talk about the free agency they had because I reckon it's just slipped under the radar. Did they make any major splash? No, not really. But they made a lot of nice splashes. Why did I say it like that? I don't know. But they made a lot of nice moves. I'll say that. I'll say that. Before I even do it, though, if you could drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new. It would be much appreciated. I make content like this every single day. And it just helps out a ton. So that would be cool. Do that. Nice. <laughs> but anyways, let's get into it. We want to talk about the kind of moves they made. Straight off the bat, Dennis Schroeder a really, really nice sign. But when you're getting a player of Dennis Schroeder's caliber on a mid-level exception, and everyone's just focused on the money that he missed out on, which... That's tough. It is tough for Dennis Schroeder, but with Terry Rozier just making, what did he make? $26 million a year or something ridiculous, $24 million a year. With him making that kind of money, Schroeder still has hope that he could get another big contract. But with him missing out on all that money and everyone talking about that, it's overshadowed how good a move this is. Getting someone of his caliber who could be a starting guard or he could be a backup guard. He can give you 16 points a game. He's a good defender. He was fantastic in Oklahoma. Fantastic and good at the Lakers. Up until the playoffs where he struggled a little bit, Lakers fans really liked him, at least from what I heard. And I think it was for good reason because he was a good player. That's what he is. He's a good player that's now severely underpaid. <laughs> he went from getting overpaid to now underpaid and, well... That's the reality. So that's a fantastic pickup for the Boston Celtics that we shouldn't let his kind of failure overshadow what it is as a great pickup for the Celtics. Now, hopefully he doesn't get too caught up with this being his contract year, trying to really make a name for himself, averaging 17 to 20 points a game, trying to handle the ball so much because the Celtics have already had issues with ball movement. They need everyone to buy into Ime Odoka's system. They need that. They need buy-in. They need it from everyone, from top to bottom, Dennis Schroeder included. So they're going to need that. But if he stays to his role, if he does what he did in the Lakers and just performs like that at $6 million a year, off the bench, maybe as a starter, if you want to change up a few lineups, he's played in three guard lineups in Oklahoma. So he's got that kind of versatility. We've seen it work. It's just a fantastic deal. There's no other way about it. And then looking at probably even more of an underrated move because it was the first move, was it not? Yeah, it was the first move of free agency when free agency wasn't even open. That's how Woj gets it done. But Al Horford. That's just a fantastic move. Al Horford is someone where, yes, you lose Kemba Walker, but I think you make up for Kemba Walker. You've got the offensive firepower. As I said, they're a top 10 offense last year, and that was with the injuries. That was with pretty much everything going against them. People have said they had terrible ball movement, which it wasn't good. It just simply wasn't good ball movement. But all of those things considered, they were still the 10th ranked offense. They've still got Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and other guys that can score. You've got the scoring. But now you add in some playmaking. We've talked about passing. Everyone's talked about passing when it comes to the Celtics. They need more ball movement. How about getting in one of the best big man passes in the league? Someone who can stretch the floor and also the other things that he does. Defensively, he's good. But just the little thing, he's going to help Robert Williams. He might be the starter. Rob Williams might be the starter. I'm not sure right now. Rob Williams just re-signed. Fantastic re-signing as well. We'll talk about all of those things, but he's going to help him. He's a vet. 
He's a vet. They need a leader. Marcus Smart is a leader. Jason Tatum is emerging. Jalen Brown, obviously an incredibly intelligent guy, and I'm sure he leads, but it doesn't hurt to have another veteran because they don't really have that real veteran presence that I can think of. And Al Horford is that guy. He wasn't bad in Oklahoma by any means. He was good. He was good. They were a decent team. They were a decent team up until he got injured and then, well, he didn't even get injured. They just told him to sit on the couch. Shea Gilgis Alexander got injured. That's neither here nor there. But they were a decent team while he was still on the floor, which says a lot because when he wasn't, they were absolutely woeful. Says a lot. He'll be good. Either he's coming off the bench or he's starting. I don't mind either way, but he had some spacing. He had some veteran leadership and some passing. So another great underrated deal. And with the way you make up for that Kemba loss, it's just more of an addition rather than a like-for-like -like swap, in my opinion. It's not where you're looking at one and going, oh, well, you lose Kemba here, and then you add Horford there. No, you replace Kemba with the likes of Richardson, with the likes of Schroeder, with the likes of Smart, who should hopefully be healthy a whole season. Peyton Pritchard getting better. Aaron Naismith even adds a little bit of guard play as well. And then you add in Horford. You get the point? So I'm pretty happy with what they did there. That's just a fantastic move all around the board. And I just mentioned him before, Josh Richardson as well. I'm not too sold on him just yet because he was pretty bad in Dallas. We can't forget that. Unlike Schroeder, unlike Horford, who were actually both good in their last years, just a couple of things went different for them. Richardson just wasn't very good. He just simply wasn't very good. But it's a swing that you take a chance on. It's better than Carson Edwards. It's, it's better than whoever else they were running out for 20 minutes a night at times when they had injuries or when they just had a lack of depth. This is the major overriding theme for me when it comes to the Celtics this season. Their depth is so much better. That was a huge thing for them last year. They didn't have a really go-to bench scorer, and they didn't have enough depth. They just didn't have enough bench scoring, enough guys that you could come in there and know that they could play a role. Now, all of a sudden, when you have Tatum and all of those guys, and then you have the likes of Naismith, who looks a lot better. He's looked good in Summer League, and he was good towards the end of the season. You have Peyton Pritchard. Even Romeo Langford was good in periods. One of Horford or Williams, probably Horford coming off the bench, I'd imagine. Richardson, am I missing someone? Jabari Parker, I guess. But all of those guys... Now you've got about nine to 10 guys that I would trust on the floor, as opposed to last year, where at times it was like six to seven. It was pretty dire when it came to depth. There was a reason why Tatum and Brown didn't feel too confident passing the ball off as much as people would have liked them to do, because who were they passing to? Carson Edwards? Semi Ojale? Grant Williams? Can you blame them? I don't blame them. So now all of a sudden they've got guys that they can pass the ball to, which is huge. And Richardson adds a different dynamic. If he gets back to his Miami Heat best, you've got someone who can play make, someone who can shoot the ball, defend, and even take players off the dribble. That's huge. Even if he doesn't get back to his best, he's still a decent body, as I said. He's better than Carson Edwards. He's better than those other guys that I just listed. And that's the lineup versatility you get as well with the depth they have. Now, all of a sudden, you've got Peyton Pritchard that you could run alongside Marcus Smart if you want the shooting, or you could go with the defense with Schroeder or Richardson. Obviously, Adoka's going to have his own game plans and his own ideas, which we don't really know about as of right now, so it's kind of hard to speculate. But overall, looking at free agency, I think the Celtics had a really successful free agency. Was it a, a, did they knock it out of the park? No, because they didn't make a huge move. You can't really say that unless they made a huge move. But in terms of little moves, they made a lot of good little moves. Even Ennis Cantor. Ennis Cantor might be terrible in the playoffs, but they're not going to need him in the playoffs. They're just going to need him in the regular season. And side note, when Cantor has been on the Celtics twice now, this is his third time, is it not? And the Blazers, anytime he's been on one of those teams, they've been more successful. Yeah. Uh, that's proven. That is proven. So all I'm saying is the Ennis Cantor charm might really help the Celtics this season as well on a side note, because he's a good regular season player. He'll help you win some games. He'll be decent. And then getting to the more important stuff, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown. Also, shout out to Peyton Pritchard. Had a fantastic summer league. As I mentioned, he's going to be good. I think he's going to take another leap. He's going to be a fantastic spark plug or even as a starting guard because you've got the versatility in the lineups. You can get away with having someone of that smaller nature. Think of Fred Van Vliet and Kyle Lowry. If you have Marcus Smart, who's versatile positions one through five, Jason Tatum versatile, Jalen Brown versatile, Robert Williams versatile, all of a sudden, you can get away with Peyton Pritchard being a little bit undersized, but we got to talk about the big guns. There's no point in making a Celtics video and not talking about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. Marcus Smart obviously got paid as well. He's cool. I think he'll have a better season. Last year was a season where things didn't go to plan for Marcus Smart. I mean, he had the free agency on his mind. He had the trade on his mind. He got injured. It was a whole lot of 
unfortunate stuff for Smart. So now he gets his head cleared. He's going to have a full season where hopefully he's healthy and hopefully he's ready to get back to his best because a really good version of Marcus Smart is a really good impactful player. That shouldn't be undervalued either. But Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Tatum, he just seems to go from strength to strength. If I told you right now he's going to be a top five player next year, what would be your reaction? Well, you're a Celtics fan, so you'd probably be like, he already is. But like, seriously, if I told you that, would you be surprised? Again, you're a Celtics fan. If you're watching this, maybe, or if you're not, you probably shouldn't be surprised because I wouldn't be surprised. Am I saying he's going to be? Well, there's a ton of players, so it's not going to be easy to crack into that list. But if he averages 30 points a game, he's already a good defender. He could be even better. His playmaking could go up a notch. There's just no surprises there for me. He's done everything that we could expect from him. He's continued to get better and better. The second half of the season was fantastic after he had that little hiccup with the virus. But once he got healthy back into the swing of things, his legs back under him, he looked like the best version of himself. We saw him drop a 50 bomb. Did he drop two 50 bombs? Yeah, I think he dropped two 50 bombs in the playoffs. We saw him do that. The man is a superstar, a fringe superstar that could take another the jump this year which is a whole different dimension for the Celtics if he becomes that Kawhi Leonard level star again I don't want to put too many expectations on Tatum but he is that good we all know he's going to take another leap at some point in time whether it's this year next year or the year after it's bound to happen he's just that good and Jalen Brown don't sell him short I mean he just took a huge leap he's consistently got better Who's to say he can't take another leap and maybe you're looking at Kawhi Leonard and Paul George? <laughs> Let me not get carried away. All I'm saying is there's definitely some similarities with those guys. So with those two guys in mind, you can't undersell the Boston Celtics. We already know the star power is there, but then you add the depth. You add a different coaching dynamic. Udoka, maybe Stevens. I don't believe the thought process where people are talking about he's overrated, he's not a great coach. I just don't believe that. He did a good job with what he had and I think he'd still be a good coach, but and now he's doing a good job in a GM role. Udoka hopefully is the right Right man for the job. He's going to encourage ball movement is something he said. Defense is something he said. There's the principles that you want in a championship level team. This is a team that isn't getting enough talk about. Jason Tatum is still a young player that had a fantastic Olympics, had a fantastic playoffs, had a fantastic second half of the season. Jalen Brown, you could also say had a fantastic season, has continued to improve. The trajectory of those guys is definitely going up. It's definitely going up. And as a result, you would imagine the Celtics are also going up. 36 and 36 does not reflect the season they had. Well, it does. <laughs> it does, but it does not reflect the talent or the ability of this team, of that team. And that wasn't even a team that isn't remotely as good as this team. So that's what I want to say about this Celtics team. They've been slipping under the radar, in my opinion. Good free agency, a lot of room to improve with the likes of Tatum, Pritchard, Naismith, Brown, Williams, Robert Williams as well. I probably should have talked about him a little bit more in depth, but he's got a lot of talent. He's got a lot of talent, bags of it. Oh yeah, have a good day.